Um, good morning, Alexi. It's a pleasure to be with you. Good morning, Gail. Thank you for having me here. Absolutely. Uh, it, it, it's great to be able to, to meet with you. We, we spoke uh, just almost at the beginning of, of the pandemic and, and now we're starting into fall. And, you know, I guess uh, one of the questions that is so obvious is maybe what are some of the lessons that your organization uh, has learned uh, from COVID-19? I think we've we've uh, we have learned a lot, and um, honestly, I I'm not sure we've learned it all. So there is still so much to learn. But I would say uh, I would say top of mind, I think what we've learned is maybe three things. I would say the first one is to be extremely clear on your priorities, and since day one in this pandemic, we uh, and it has been said at, at the group level, by the way, the first priority was to protect the health, safety, and well-being of our people. Mm-hmm. The second one was to protect the cash of the company. And the third one was to, uh, to be ready for the market bounce back. And, and, and being very clear on those three priorities have, has been extremely helpful so that we could really drive the energy towards those three priorities and, and nothing else. So that uh, I would say your chance to reach and to meet those objectives. The first one I would say is to, uh, to learn from the outside. And uh, we, had, we, we had and we still have so many unknowns that at the end it has accelerated the, um, I would say, the openness of the company to the outside, learning from others. And uh, we are fortunate to be part of a worldwide group so that we, uh, we could benefit from the experience of uh, the Asian markets and uh, that were confronted with, with that virus already in January. Uh, Europe, mostly uh, March and April. So, so we were trialing behind so that we could also leverage that experience and, and it has really cross-fertilized experience across the organization and for us also with, with other companies outside organization. Uh, and I would say the third one is anticipation. And that might sound a bit weird, but uh, when you don't know what's ahead of us, you could ask me, how, how do you anticipate? But I think just to give you one example, when it came to the health and safety of our people, we quickly realized that applying our safety protocols that we, by the way, still apply today was not enough. And this is why in uh, many locations across uh, the US and in Canada, we have been organizing some events and some communications, some press conference to try to spread the vigilance message outside the company and to implore our neighbors and our community to behave uh, safely, meaning uh, embracing those uh, safety protocols, practicing the social distancing, washing hands, wearing masks. And if you remember, we had um, organized uh, in, in July a press conference at our headquarters here for the same reason, to anticipate again and say if we don't do our job and do our part to, uh, to spread that vigilance message, we might, uh, might not be able to anticipate the next wave. And uh, we were fortunate to have with us uh, Dr. Linda Bell, which is a state South Carolina epidemiologist. Uh, we had Molly Spearman with us, uh, state uh, South Carolina uh, superintendent of education. Mm-hmm. And we had nine other business leaders and medical health system leaders. And all together, we spread that message. And I will stop here, but just to tell you that when it comes to anticipation, we, we went far away from our uh, I would say tire manufacturing role, which is the core of a business today, mm-hmm. because we thought that it was part of our of our anticipation role that we had to play. So being clear on our priorities, um, learning from the outside, and anticipation are maybe the first three learnings that I, I could share with you. That's uh, that's interesting, and um, and then there's also the forecast, and you spoke about. Um, you know, managing the cash, being careful with the cash, and then you're trying to forecast in a world that is slightly, slightly, slightly shifting in terms of, of tires. How does it affect uh, those areas? Yeah, that's, um, you know, when, um, that's also part of the, I think, of the learnings, and, and this is some, we have a strong culture within Michelin to, to innovate. And I think your, your question leads to, to, to that because when you don't know what's ahead of you, I think you can, you can try to make forecasts. We made forecasts, but they were obviously wrong. But, but then we have just find new ways to make forecasts, leveraging our, I would say, our ecosystem or environments. And we find new ways of doing many, many things. And I can just quote or, or share with you one that is uh, related to your question. 
we have been doing, for example, every Friday, I spent most of the day um, discussing with, uh, with our largest customer across the board, B2B or B2C, and share together during 30-minute session what do we know and what we don't know. Wow. And it has helped us to, it has helped us to, again, to share the unknown, and then together we were stronger and we were less wrong. I'm not telling you we were right, but we were for, <laughs> for sure less wrong. So that was a way to do innovation and to try to manage the unknown, which, which is a challenge today. But I think it's, it's somewhat the new normal also. What a great idea. So you um, set up these weekly meetings with your customer, B2B or B2C, and just really had conversation around yeah. what they were hearing, what you were hearing, and just keeping that open conversation and, and uh, everyone coming together. The team, the team set up that, and I was very glad and proud to participate. And, uh, and I had the pleasure to discuss every, every Friday with uh, all the CEOs of the major uh, partners we have in the country. So that was, that was yeah. great. And it is still a great experience. We are still doing that today. Not every Friday, mm-hmm. but you know, every other two Fridays, we still have those contact together. So that, yeah. that's very interesting. Yeah, I think that's a really important message for people listening to hear, other businesses to hear. So innovation, what role has it played in the last few months? And you've touched on that already, but uh, anything else you would add to that? Yes, I think, um, you know, at Mishnah, we have a strong culture of innovation. Uh, We are a 130-year-old company, and from day one, innovation has been been part of our DNA. So I think um, this crisis or this period... uh, has been amplifying those behaviors. And maybe just to give you a, a couple of very concrete examples, um, I think the first one is on the communication. And you, it's also probably a great learning also from, the, from this period. We have been completely changed the way we have been communicating internally. Mm-hmm. And before, this, uh, before the crisis hit us in, in, the, in the spring, we were used to have monthly communication Mm-hmm. That were um, that were a mix of physical. That was a mix of physical communication and, and, and digital because some people were located here in the headquarters, and others could could connect themselves. But it was eighty percent top down information, and at best I would say twenty percent bottom up, meaning addressing questions. And uh, within the the second half of the month of March, we we switched to a weekly communication, mm-hmm. and completely reversed, meaning twenty percent top down information sharing. Where are we as a company? What are we doing to protect our people, to protect you? Mm-hmm. And then taking 40, 45 minutes, minutes to address questions, whatever the questions were. And, and wow. they were very tough questions, but we, I was really insisting with the team to take all the questions mm-hmm. so that we can really increase the level of transparency, increase the level of trust, because when you don't know what's, uh, what's around you, the only thing to do is, is to go stronger together and to be as one. Mm-hmm. And those sessions have been very inspiring for me first, I would say, and for the employees apparently also. But it was very important for me to have and for the leadership team to have that uh, weekly discussion with the team. So, so that's one way to, to innovate. And the communication now is, is, looks very differently from, from what we were used to do. I think this crisis, to say differently, has helped us to maximize those behaviors. Yeah. And we have seen a lot of, of proof, that, uh, a lot of examples, that we have been able to change the way we were, uh, we were working together. And if I give you some examples, I have, I have some, some here. I came with that today. We have been producing masks, for example, so starting from, from scratch. Mm-hmm. And today we are self, uh, self-sufficient in, in mask production uh, at Michelin in North America, so that's great. We have another employee that has been uh, producing some uh, what we call ear savings because those straps are irritating people when you wear it all the day. So he has been developing by himself something you can put behind your head so that it does not touch the ears anymore. And, and it's, a, it's a great relief for, for the people. Uh, another facility uh, we call Fenner has been developing this, this key so that you can, I don't know where you see that, you can open doors and you can press button without having a, a touch so to protect yourself. So all of that are just innovation that came, I would say, out of the blue, just uh, leveraging the, the initiative and the passion that people have uh, for, for the company. So Very much plays into the Michelin purpose. Absolutely. Absolutely. That, that's, uh, that's a great point, Gail. And, um, and maybe to that, that, so that point, it's, um, again, when I come back to your first question, which, which is a great one, what did we learn and um, what have we learned? And I think the, the purpose of Michelin... We talk now about, um, and our goal is to be and we will become an all-sustainable company. 
And what we mean by that is to our ability to, to balance over time profits, people, and planet. Mm -hmm. And we believe that if we achieve over time to manage at the same time those three um, elements and domain, this is the way a company can remain sustainable. And we think this is the way we should behave mm -hmm. uh, as human. And, and I think the crisis amplifies the relevance of this, of this vision. Because if you think about it one minute, we saw clearly the, the traffic and the air travel reduction and also the, the decrease in industrial activities having a positive impact on the planet, no doubt. Yeah. yeah. But then what's, what's the impact of that on the people? Mm -hmm. and if we talk about South Carolina, we move from 2.2%, I think, unemployment to 123 as we speak today. Mm -hmm. So you see that's not sustainable. On the other hand, if we systematically sacrifice the planet for the profits, what would that mean for the natural resource in 10 years from now? Mm -hmm. And if we systematically sacrifice profit for our people, mm -hmm. we might have very engaged and happy people in the short term, but whether we'll be able to keep them employed over the time is also questionable. Mm -hmm. so, so what I like in, in our vision is that this, this period has just very simply demonstrated how relevant our approach is and, and and this is back to your question the purpose of the company has not been as relevant as it is today after this crisis that's that's really uh, inspiring for i think for me and for us yes i would think it would be and i've definitely heard you talk about this formula before the three p's yeah um so you and th and I appreciate you catching us up on all of that because it's been um, it's certainly been challenging times and and so much has happened between now and the last time we spoke. I, I do want to know one of the things you said that really struck stayed with me is um, your curiosity about will people lead technology or will technology lead people? I, I wonder what your thoughts are now about that. Yes, I remember our talks, Gail. Um, I've been thinking about that many, many times uh, since then, because um, I think the, um, if one day humans are led by technology, I think we will lose or we will run the risk to lose the meaning. And, um, and I think the meaning is probably what, what, uh, what should and must probably make the link between technology and, and human. Because if one day we have a technology, but we as humans, we don't understand the meaning of that, what for, I think we will, we will lose everything and we won't be able to embrace that technology. Mm -hmm. And that's why I think it, it's, it's our role as, as leader in an organization to make sure that people understand why using those technologies makes sense. So what's the meaning of that? And giving our people the means to understand, to embrace, to get trained for that. And... Uh, and so that's why I think the more I think about that, the more I'm, I'm focusing on the meaning so that we can really leverage technologies to achieve our, our priorities. And this is a huge change. Mm -hmm. And um, since la the last discussion we had, uh, it just reminded me some famous quote that our, our chief digital officer is, is uh, repeating every time and he's absolutely right. When you, when you talk about digital, uh, digital is it's 5% about technology and it's 95% about people. So it's another way to say that, uh, yes, the technology is moving very fast and probably much faster than, than, than we as humans can evolve. But that's why the change and, again, making sure that we understand the meaning of the technology mm -hmm. is the way to, to keep that balance between how fast technology is moving and that's just how fast are we able as humans to change the way we behave and work. It's such a good point. It's so important to be looking at that. I'm, I'm so glad that you're, you're talking about that. Mm -hmm. um, I want to ask you what you want to accomplish going forward. Yes. Uh, the, I know that's really open-ended, but. <laughs> no, no, it's, it's, a, it's a great question, Gail. I think, uh, I think I will keep on doing what I started to do when I, when I joined this fantastic team last year in June is to keep focusing on our, on our people and, um, and leveraging the trust that we have been, I think, um, incredibly increasing over the time now and during this crisis. 
and uh, you were kind enough to to share with me in the last uh, last week so one very uh, inspiring reading that you, that is called from bureaucracy to humanocracy mm -hmm. and i think it, it it puts a concept behind what i have in mind which is to say let's let's keep putting our people first far before our processes because from time to time in, in kind of a, in, in, in such large organization like we have, we, we could run the risk to have people just following the process without really understanding the meaning. Right. And, and definitely within the crisis, again, when you put our people first, you just understand that you have a ton of energy that, that, uh, that is ready to be unleashed. And I think focusing on our people uh, is probably something I'm going to increasingly do in the future. I think we've, we've done a lot altogether. But there are so much more to be done because um, when you don't know what's ahead of you, there are, I think, no better way to face that situation but to empower your team because they will see things much before you can do it and they will know what has to be done right now to face that rather than if you wait everyone to understand what's, what's, what's coming up, then it's too late. So I think, yeah, keep on focusing on our people building the trust further and leveraging the organization is, is for sure what I, have, what I have in mind. Yeah, you said that so well. That has to be so empowering to your people to hear, to hear you say that. I just, it's just so interesting to watch what you're doing and, and the focus that you bring as president and then to be um, looking at this topic of humanocracy and, and pulling from everyone you know, really wanting to listen and hear, because as you said, um, those are the people that are, everyone's seeing, everyone has, you know, some idea of what's going on and, and of potential solutions and, and really giving them, um, having them be inspired, having them be ready to share thoughts and ideas and, mm -hmm. and having them feel valued in that regard. To me, that's what you're doing. And that's what I'm reading a lot about. Um, because I think that the time is right for that. Um, top down just isn't what we need right now. And, and your company, you know, being, having the years invested, but starting with innovation and starting with changing and, you know, just looking at your story speaks to the fact that, yes, ideally you would be able to navigate this. So um, uh, that's what I've really been thinking a lot about is I've interviewed other leaders and I, you know, I recall that when you said our innovation is going to be about people and, and I'm probably not, not saying that well, but, but that, that to me, that's where innovation can really occur right now. Cause when yeah. people start to change and, and feel, you know, that their voice matters and put in their different voices of diversity on a particular issue and, and they don't have to have their way adopted. They just want to be able be heard. But, yeah. but because you are looking for that and that's the filter in which you're using, um, I just, I think that's absolutely amazing. And, and this film, you know, will definitely be shared with our students. Um, who are many of whom are already running businesses, running companies, and who are looking for most effective ways to reach yeah. their people right now. Maybe to close that that, that question, the, when we say focusing on people, profit, and planet on the people side, we say Mishnah, we are there for our people, mm -hmm. and Mishnah is also made through our people. So we said for and through because, because people is at the heart. And, and I am not Michelin in North America. The, the 23,000 employees are making Michelin every day in North America. Mm -hmm. So that's another way to say let, let's focus on our people because they are making the company. They are serving our customers. Yeah. Uh, they are the heart of the company. So it's not um, more complicated than that. And I'm there to serve them, to support them. Mm -hmm. but they are making everything every day. So it, we just be as humble as that and, and face this reality and, and do all what we can to support them. Yeah. So, thank yeah, you. Thank, yeah. Thank you very much for, uh, for this, this session it was also very inspiring for me to talk about those, uh, those topics related to the, to the crisis we've been through, even though, honestly, if you, if you think about that and I'm still processing what we shared today, again, I think it applies to every kind of situation, what we said, focusing on the people, having clear priorities, and unleashing the energy of the organization, I think it applies far beyond the crisis. So, so I think this crisis will help each one of us to, to get out uh, stronger.
Love that you ended it that way. I think we all need to be reminded of that. So thank you, Alexi. It's so great to see you and I appreciate your time as always. It was a shared pleasure, Gary. Thank you very much. Have a great day and be safe, right? You too. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye-bye.